Let us remember before God and commend to his sure keeping those who died for their country in time of war, those whom we knew and those whose memory we treasure, and all who have lived and died in the service of mankind. The 1914-1918 conflict, Ernest Anscombe, Reginald Blake, Thomas Brett, Frederick Cleave, Walter Dibble, Gerald Hodgson, Alfred Knight, James Pratt, Charles Rump, Alfred Savage, Charles Savage, Frederick Squib, Squib Joseph Stevens, Charles Woods, Stephen Woods, John Woodyer. The 1939-1945 conflict, Stuart Billings, Walter Brooks, Digby Dent, Robert Dixon, John Framley, Ronald Gray, Anthony Ince, Alistair MacDonald, Brian Opperman, Frederick Poulter, Robert Riches, Desmond Roberts, Edward Wood, Theodore Zizou. They shall grow not old, as we that are left grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun, and in the morning, we will remember them. We will remember them. <laughs> Thank you. 
almighty and eternal God, from whose love in Christ we cannot be parted, either by death or life, hear our prayers and thanksgivings for all whom we remember this day. Fulfill in them the purpose of your love and bring us all with them to your eternal joy, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Not to us, O Lord, not to us, but unto your name be praised. The Lord has done great things for us, and we rejoice in his mercy. Praise the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Please be seated. We are gathered today to remember all those from this village who gave their lives in the two world wars, those who have given their lives in other conflicts, and those whose lives are this day at risk in the theatre of conflict. We remember those who were killed in action or by disease, the bereaved, the lost, the families which were shattered, the wounded, maimed and injured, those who held in silence the unspeakable memories of warfare. As we remember those who fought and those who remained anxiously at home in this community, let us pray that God will heal all memories, speak a word of peace and bring us his healing. So we stand to sing our first hymn, which can be found in your weekly news sheets on page three. O oh God, our help in ages past. <laughs> seated for our first scripture reading. The 
first reading is taken from the Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 3. The souls of the righteous are in the hand of God, and no torment will ever touch them. In the eyes of the foolish, they seem to have died, and their departure was thought to be a disaster, and their going from us to be their destruction. But they are at peace. For though in the sight of others they were punished, their hope is full of immortality. Having been disciplined a little, they will receive great good, because God tested them and found them worthy of himself. Like gold in the furnace he tried them, and like a sacrificial burnt offering he accepted them. In the time of their visitation they will shine forth and will run like sparks through the stubble. They will govern nations and rule over peoples, and the Lord will reign over them forever. Those who trust in him will understand truth, and the faithful will abide with him in love, because grace and mercy are upon his holy ones, and he watches over his elect. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us confess to God the sins and shortcomings of the world, its pride, its selfishness, and its greed, its evil divisions and hatreds. Let us confess our share in what is wrong and our failure to seek and establish the peace which God wills for his children. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with you, our God, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. May Almighty God have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. You remain seated for our second scripture reading. The second reading is taken from the Gospel of St. John, chapter 15. As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. I have said these things to you so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I do not call you servants any longer, because the servant does not know what the master is doing. But I have called you friends, because I have made known to you everything that I have heard from my Father. You did not choose me, but I chose you. And I appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last, so that the Father will give you whatever you ask him in my name. I am giving you these commands, so that you may love one another. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
We remain seated as the choir sings the anthem and leads our worship of Almighty God. They sing Purcell's Thou Knowest Lord, the Secrets of Our Hearts. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. On the 3rd of August, 1914, (coughs) the Foreign Secretary, Sir Edmund Gray, stood in the House of Commons and told Parliament, explained to his colleagues that Britain was going to war with Germany. The story goes that he returned to the Foreign Office and worked until dusk when a friend came to visit him. And they both went to the window of his study and saw a man lighting gas lamps in St. James's Park. And he said to his friend, the lights are going out all over Europe. We shall not see them lit again in our lifetime. That was a quote which was well known once upon a time. Some of you will have heard it doing history um, lessons in school. Less well known now, unless you're someone who's particularly into history. But it speaks so incredibly clearly of the most terrible darkness into which Europe was plunged as the war with Germany was declared. There's no hyperbole or exaggeration, really, in Gray's words. For whilst the war was hard won after four years and four months of fighting, the human toll of war rippled through communities in this country and across the world, and the political turmoil of those events continued through most of the 20th century, indeed, 
still, some might say, continue today. The lights went out. The optimism, the sense that nothing could stand in the way of human progress, which Western society had at the close of the Victorian age, was extinguished. Gone was the belief that the essential goodness of humankind would generate a bright future, the hope that a more enlightened society had put away the need for war. These were the fond dreams of our forebears. And on the 4th of August, 1914, they were snuffed out. Of all the lights of hope and optimism which were extinguished, nothing can compare to the lives of the 16 million people individual lights, civilian and military, snuffed out in that conflict. But their light, and the light of those who gave their lives 20 years later in the Second World War, and the lights of those, of all those, who have suffered greatly and given their lives for the cause of justice and freedom since, continue to shine as we remember them. They continue to shine whenever we call them to mind and give thanks for their courage and their sacrifice and as we commit ourselves to walking in the paths of peace. As I wrote this, I couldn't help but think of the increase in tensions on the Ukrainian border. That our world, which we might have said would now be free from such conflicts, stands so very frequently on the brink of them reigniting. I could not help but think of the refugees who are fleeing from tyrants in their countries, who suffer greatly as they seek to escape great suffering at home. I could not help but think of the mothers who weep at the loss of their children and of the tyrants who sleep easy at night. It seems as important as ever it was that we remember the sacrifice of so many people by committing ourselves earnestly to the peace which they sought to establish. That is the way that their light burns bright in our lives. And so as we remember the darkness which engulfed Europe in the first half of the 20th century, as we weep for the darkness which still shrouds the world, we also remember that light is seen at its most dazzlingly brilliant when the darkness surrounds it. When the Lord Jesus Christ died on the cross, darkness fell across the globe. But it was there that the light of his love shone in its greatest brilliance. It was there that the deepest darkness was not able, able to overcome the light of Christ, the light of love, the light of forgiveness and friendship. May that light, the light of love, reconciliation, forgiveness, friendship, shine in our lives our friendships, our families, our church, our community. And as it shines, may it bring hope and peace to all those who behold it. Amen. Let us pray for all who suffer as a result of conflict and ask that God may give us peace. For the servicemen and women who died in the violence of war, each one remembered by and known to God, together with those who loved them in death as in life. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord graciously, graciously hear us. For all members of the armed forces, 
who are on operational duties or in any kind of danger this day, remembering family, friends, and all who pray for their safe return. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord graciously, graciously hear us. us. For civilian men, women, children, and whose lives are disfigured by the horrors of war, Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord graciously, graciously hear us. For those who are in pain or discomfort as a result of injuries sustained in conflict, asking that those who minister to their needs may be blessed with skill and understanding so that all may know healing and wholeness. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord graciously, graciously hear, us. hear us. For peacemakers, peacekeepers, who are asked to keep this world secure and free, that they may be blessed in their efforts and guided by the common good. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord graciously, graciously hear, us. hear us. For Elizabeth, our Queen, and all who bear the burden and privilege of leadership, political, military, and religious, asking for gifts of wisdom and resolve in the search for reconciliation and peace. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord graciously, graciously hear, us. hear us. O God of truth and justice, we hold before you those whose memory we cherish and those whose names we will never know. Help us to lift our eyes above the torment of this broken world, and as we honour the past, may we place our hope in you for the future. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. As we ask for deliverance from evil, so we pray in the words that Jesus gave us. Our, Our Father, Father, who art, who art in, in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy, thy will, will be done, done on, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Please stand. Let us pledge ourselves anew to the service of God and our fellow men and women that we may help, encourage and comfort others and support those working for the relief of the needy and for the peace and welfare of the nations. Lord God, our Father, we pledge ourselves to serve you and all mankind in the cause of peace, for the relief of need and suffering, and for the praise of your name. Guide us by your Spirit. Give us wisdom. Give us courage. Give us hope. And keep us faithful now and always. Amen. We remain standing for our final hymn. In fact, I should give a brief notice before we sing our final hymn, and that is, first of all, to thank you all for coming, um, for being so very good with wearing masks during this service. You've been really excellent. Um, thank you for um, those who've been involved in putting the service together, particularly for our choir. Thank you for everything that you've done to prepare for Sebastian to Anne for bearing a standard today. Um, thank you all. There is a plate at the door for a retiring collection, which is for the Royal British Legion Poppy Appeal. Do please be generous in giving to the Poppy Appeal. It's by the north door. You'll see a, a brass plate. Anyone who would like to also give a donation to the work of the church, there's a contactless giving device by the, uh, round, on the round table by the font. So you can use that too if you'd like. But um, please don't forget the poppy appeal um, plate by the door. Um, after the service, we'll be um, having our wreath-laying ceremonies, first of all at Bombardier Evans' grave, then at the War Memorial, then at Soldiers' Corner, and then finally down at the Village Hall. Um, so please do join us after the service as we 
lay wreaths in honour of those who gave their lives in the wars. And so we stand and sing our final hymn, I Vow to Thee, My Country. God grant to the living grace, to the departed rest, to the church, the queen, the commonwealth, and all mankind, peace and concord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God.